the Lord has blessed my life. Hallelujah. You may be seated this evening. Anybody want has a word of testimony tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to testimony? You? Okay. Mariah has a word, right? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Hello. Um, Jesus is working throughout our lives. Um, Amen. Glory be to God. Um, we were we were currently facing homelessness, uh, battle with addiction, and things. Um, God has delivered me from it. Uh, he has provided shelter for us. Um, he has provided a brand new job uh, through the Mayo Clinic with experience that I haven't had or thought about having. He completely switched my life around from customer service to now I'm doing digital pathology. Um, he has provided us with an apartment. Um, he is doing exceedingly and abundantly. He has blessed women's health. Women have been like, battling. Since we got down here, since we moved down here, he had been battling with uh, many ear infections. Uh, he did have a test positive for COVID. He had strep throat. He was getting hit left and right. But with the prayers and the doctors and the research, it's just amazing to see that he is feeling he is better than he has before. And I have a church family. <laughs> It's real. It's real. When we trust in the Lord, the Lord always is there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Thank um, I give thanks to the Lord this evening. Um, I thank the Lord for all the things you've done for the years that I've been here in the church. To protect her, to heal her. To give her a gave her a transplant years ago and she didn't need to have the medicine. Give thanks for my daughter Iris and for my grandchildren. She's going through a different stage in her life that is very difficult. The only thing as her mother that I can do is pray for her. And I know that God will help her. I thank the Lord because he's given me a good man in my life. Yes, thank you. To get Just married. Wait, <laughs> wait till everything becomes in order. Right. Yes. Um, ayer, yo del Yesterday, as I was leaving work, um, no sé qué pasó. I don't know what happened. Oh, she fell down on her face as she's going across the street. Um, lo, Lo más increíble es que Dios me protegió porque no me quebré ni un hueso. The main thing is that God been incredibly preserved her. She didn't break a bone. No me raspé nada. Didn't even get a scratch. Lo único que pensé fue mi cara. The only thing she thought about was her face. Pero sí, uh, hoy no fui a trabajar porque pues sí estuve a gloria de los dos pies. Even though she had pain in her both feet, in her arm, in her shoulder. I thank the Lord for his infinite mercy. He's, he's 
yeah, he's been with her. He's blessed her, taken care of her, protect her. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> not a... Gloria a Dios, hermanos. Ah, okay. Yo le doy gracias a Dios porque en realidad cada mañana se mueve su misericordia. Every morning he siento, shows his mercy to her. Yeah, uh, me siento más contenta cada día. Puedo, I puedo, feel more joyful every day. Puedo sentirlo en mi corazón. Hay paz, tranquilidad. Y cosas. I can feel it in my heart. Y en mi trabajo, el Señor protegiéndome también. So I protect your head of work too. Me sentía yo como con tres guardaespaldas atrás de mí. I didn't hear you. El Señor me está cuidando. The Lord is watching over her. Él, él sabe, él conoce, él conoce quién hace bien y quién hace mal. He knows who does good and who does not evil. Él sabe que yo ahí soy una buena persona y sigo mucho a él. He, know, he knows that he's, he's a good person and she serves the Lord. Because she was working with someone that wanted to do her evil. Pero estaban los tres que parecían como tres ángeles ahí afuera, y yo no podía más, y yo no sé por qué, pero todo el día estuve yo gloriando, yo glorificando al Señor, estaba trabajando, y pues yo dije, no, no abro mis ojos, cuando vuelto a abrir mis ojos estaban los tres personas ahí, no, no sé. When she opened her eyes, there were three of the managers that were there. Y fueron muy nice conmigo. They were, they were very nice with her. Pero porque estaban estaba viendo que estaba. Because they were observing what was really viendo. going on. Eso es gracias a Dios que escucha mis oraciones. And glad yeah. the Lord hears my prayers. Hoy tuve mi día de descanso. Los, ¿Cómo se dice? Lo, los. Lo, she, yeah. she had her day no, off today. today. En realidad bueno, le pedí al Señor. Me levanto muy temprano con mi nieta y digo gracias Señor que que la trajiste a tiempo en mi vida. Gracias a Dios por mi nieta. She's thankful for her granddaughter. She was with her today. Yo que mi vida cada día, cada vez se va acomodando más. El Señor me está dando más entendimiento de. The Lord is giving you greater understanding every day. El Señor está dejando atrás el pasado y el presente lo está modificando, lo está moldeando como yo le pedía a Dios. And she had prayed unto the Lord, he's arranging her future. Amen. Amen. You're a new vessel in his hands. Because if he doesn't like something, he will break it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's been my provider. In the spiritual aspect. In the physical. In the physical also. And he gives me health. Thank you. Thank you for all the prayers that we do. Sin que nos pidamos como nos acordamos de algún hermano o hermana. As we remember the brothers and sisters and pray for them. Y más si estamos pasando por momentos difíciles. Can we all go through difficult times? Si gozamos, nos gozamos en los en los a oscuridad y nos agozamos en la en las adversidades o en la felicidad o en los malos tiempos. In the good times and the bad times we rejoice. Eso es darle gloria al Señor por lo que pasó. Just giving glory to the Lord. Porque sabemos que Dios sanó al baby Ruben. Yeah, because he healed Ruben. Porque hermana Maraya está progresando, está viendo como dicen. Sister Maraya is progressing. En su vida. Dios va a hacer grande cosa para ella. The Lord has great things for you, sister. Como lo ha hecho conmigo. Are you done with her? I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what I want to talk tonight about. 
God has made us a new vessel. Yes. But he places us upon the potter's wheel, Amen. which we do not always enjoy. But the Lord is shaping and molding us. So I want to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, beginning with the verse of the one, verse 1. Because the Lord was speaking to Jeremiah, and he says, you know what, I want you to come over here to the potter's house so I can teach you what he is trying to do with his people, especially with the nation of Israel, because Jeremiah was called out to be a prophet to the nations, yes, but first to the city of Jerusalem. So I want to go to Jeremiah 18, verse 1, to begin with tonight. And I'm going to entitle this, The Need of the Potter's Wheel. Amen. We may not like to be there, but if we realize our life before we come to the Lord, we were marred, we were battered, we had all kinds of problems, all of us. Amen. But the Lord begins to shape us and to mold us. Amen. And he also makes us a new creature in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. And he says, Behold, all things I have created new in your life. That's why it's so important that we do not live in the past. Because he has given us a new life. So we get away from the past and the things that used to influence our life. Because God had begun a work in us. And he's able to finish that work that he has started in us. But he takes us to the potter's house. And you have you ever seen a potter at work? And we are the clay. And he, the Lord himself, is the potter. Mm -hmm. But he takes Jeremiah to the potter's house to yeah. show him yeah. what he wants to do with all of our lives. Yes, this isn't just for the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. Yeah. It's for us, too. Because yeah. in the New Testament, it talks about the potter's wheel. Amen. And that's where the Lord has put us. Amen. So I want to go to the first verse. The word of the Lord that came on to Jeremiah saying... Verse 2, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there will I cause you to hear my words. Amen. His words were for Israel, but they're also for us. Amen. The Lord says, I'm going to teach you. Come over here to the potter's house. Amen. And you watch how he works on the clay. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Is everything perfect before the potter begins to work on it? Is our lives perfect before the Lord begins to work on us? None of us. And that's why he takes us to the potter's house. So he can do a work. Hallelujah. In all of our lives. And that process begins when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I want to go now, Brother Martin, uh, Brother Mar Marvin, to 1 first, uh, first Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Hallelujah. I don't have it written down, but I told them I might use it tonight. Hallelujah. It talks about becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Therefore, any man be in Christ, Amen. he is a new creature. Amen. How did you get into Christ? Through baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. You become a new creature and you arise Amen. to walk in newness of life. Amen. Your old life is left behind. Amen. Everything becomes new in your life. So he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans 6 and verse 4, Brother Marvin. Hallelujah. And I will show you when you became a new creature. Amen. When you died and resurrected with Christ. Amen. You came alive. Hallelujah. And you have become a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 6 and verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him, with Christ, by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we, as talking to us that have been baptized, also should walk in newness of life. Amen. The Lord gave you a new life when he saved you. You became his, and he is Amen. the one that shapes and molds our life. Yes, amen. That's why it's of a necessity, the potter's wheel. 
because the Father himself is the Lord Jesus Christ who shapes and forms us into the image of Christ. What happens if you take yourself off the potter's wheel? You see, all the things that happen to us is because the Lord is shaping us and molding us. But what if we take ourselves off the potter's wheel? Hallelujah. We cannot be shaped and formed in the image. And that's why I say the Bible teaches give thanks in all things. Because God is forming you. We don't always understand the the ways of God, but we know that he is shaping and forming us. And he does it in that manner. He does it just like a potter does with the clay. Because he is the one that has control of the clay of our lives. Let's go to verse 3. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the potter's wheel. He came into the house of the potter, and he began to watch how the potter began to work on the clay. We've sing that song, he is the, we are the clay, and he is the potter. Hallelujah. That's exactly who we are. We're the clay that the potter, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, shapes and molds us. Amen. That's why we, in everything we give thanks. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we don't always understand what is happening to our life, mm-hmm. but we must be grateful to the Lord Amen. because through these situations, he is shaping and forming us. Thank you. What God really works on through the Holy Ghost is our character. Amen. That our character, our spirit would be right before the Lord. Amen. Have you ever heard anybody say, I like that person's spirit. Yeah. Amen. They can read us. Amen. Yeah. They can read if you're a Christian or not. Yeah. Thank you. But you ever heard him say, I don't like his spirit, yeah. his yeah. attitude? Yeah. So God works on our spirit. Amen. Yeah. Do you know our spirit is the candlestick of God? Yeah. Uh-huh. He sees into our hearts and sees how much light is there. Because yes. yeah. he came to bring light into our lives. Yeah. But through it, he has to shape and mold us, just like the potter did to the clay. Let's go to verse 4. And the vessel he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Well, that's the condition of our lives when we come to the Lord. Our lives are marred. They're ruined, basically, without Christ. But then he takes us and begins to shape and to form us. And the vessel he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. You notice what he does with the vessel? He makes it new. And that's why I read to you 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. That's what he's done with our lives. He's made it new. He doesn't remember your past, and neither should we, because it's been forgiven and it's under the blood. But now... He is creating a new vessel. He calls us a vessel. He creates vessels to honor and to dishonor. But the Lord himself is the one that is putting us on the potter's wheel to create and make us anew. So he made it again another vessel that seems good to the potter to make it. Who has control of our lives? Jesus. Jesus. Right. We must allow him to make our life in the manner that he chooses. Hallelujah. We cannot resist the potter because he has control over our lives. If he wants to shape us in a certain way for his purpose, for his good, we have to let him. We can't speak back to to the potter and say, why did you form me this way? Because God forms us in his way and in his image. And there's no better image to be formed in than the, way, the ways of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we go through trials and tribulations, hard, hard situations. But what we don't realize, we're still on the potter's wheel and he's shaping and molding us into his image. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's the image he wants us to be made. If he has to make us a new vessel, let him make us a new vessel. Yes, Because in essence, I don't like the old me, but I do like the new me, created in Christ. Hallelujah. All my past is done away with. I don't even want to think about it. 
because he made all things new. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 6, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. And I may say that to the saints of the Lord. Do you know you are no longer sinners, but saints before God? Because he has cleansed you. Hallelujah. And you must allow him to work in your life and in your heart. Hallelujah. Because the Bible teaches, this is a teaching I'll give to you, the spirit of man returns to God when we pass from this world. That is why he works on the spirit of man, perfecting his spirit. The spirit is literally your mind and your thoughts. Yes, amen. Do you know the Bible speaks a lot about our thoughts and our mind? Yes. Says, as a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is he. Yeah. But that's talking about the spirit of man, which God takes us to the potter's wheel, and he begins to shape our spirit before him. Yep. Hallelujah. As I said, Paul said we are like letters read of all men, because they can see your spirit, that the, that the Lord has perfected. Yep. Hallelujah. I want to go now to Romans 9, verse 20 and 21 to show you that the New Testament also speaks about the potter. Romans 9, 20 and 21. Nay, but old man, what art thou that repliest against God? Our old nature. We fight sometimes the change of God, a change God wants to make in us. But he says, old man, why are you fighting against the Lord. Yeah. He says, But nay, but old man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hallelujah. We cannot say to the Lord, Why have you made me thus? Because he is the one that rules our life. Yeah. And he's shaping and forming us. So we cannot speak back to the potter or to the Lord. Why are you forming me this way? Well, he knows why. He's, uh, as the Bible tells, says he knows everything. He is everywhere. Hallelujah. And he knows our hearts. And he knows exactly what he has to do with our lives. He knows our hearts better than we do. And that's why you must trust in him. He knows our heart. He knows our spirit. And that's what he works on. Have you ever had things to make you upset? You get angry immediately? You know God works on your anger? He allows things to happen in your life that you may get up and you may come I'm angry, but he wants to see what you do. Because the Bible says, anger and sin not. Hallelujah. We see he's working on these things in our life. You may not have an anger issue, but some do. And God knows it, and he works on that. I'm just showing this as an example that you may know how the Lord works on your spirit because he is the potter, and we are the clay. Verse 21, Had not the potter power over the clay? Does not Jesus have control over our life, power over it? If we will learn to submit to him. Yeah. Of the same lump to make, to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Amen. But God is making all of our vessels of silver Amen. and of gold. They're not made of wood or stubble. Amen. That's what he wants your life to be, as Amen. pure gold. How do you get pure gold? It goes through the fire. Amen. Does it not? Yes. To become pure? Mm -hmm. And we go through the fire. But Jeremiah said, he'll take you through the fire and you will not be burned. You'll go through the high waters yep. and you will not drown. Yes. Because the Lord is with you. Yes. But he uses fire and situations in our life you, to purify our spirits and our hearts. Yes. 
Hallelujah. That's why the Bible talks about the temptations. And he will not allow you to be tempted above and beyond of what you can take. Amen. But we go through the fire. We do go through it. But he said you will not be burned. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to go now to uh, Isaiah 29 and verse 16. See, the prophet Isaiah and Jeremiah are speaking to the nation of Israel. They were in a, in a backslidden condition to tell you right away. But God said if through his mercy wanted them to turn back to him. So he sends Jeremiah and Isaiah saying, turn to me and I'll forget what I wanted to do to you. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 16. Surely your turning of the things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say to him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is the potter? Jesus. Does he have understanding of our lives? Oh, we cannot say he doesn't understand us because he has all wisdom and all knowledge. He understands us better than we do ourselves. We may say, I don't have a problem with anything. But the Lord says, you know what? You do. This you need to change. This you need to change. And his list is probably who knows how long it is. Hallelujah. But he works on us. He is patient. He is good. He's love. But he works on us. I want to go to Proverbs 16 and verse 4. Do you know the Lord God makes all things for himself? You and I were created for him. Yeah. We belong to him. Yes. And that's why we cannot speak back to the one that has created us yeah. or the one that is shaping and form us yes. and say, you don't know what you're doing in my life. Amen. But he does. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Amen. God says, hey, literally, he creates all things. Yes. He creates evil and he creates good. Yes. But he uses evil to destroy the wicked. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's one thing we need to understand. Amen. I want to go to 2 Timothy 2 and verse 20 to show you it also speaks of this in the New Testament. Amen. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. That's what he wants to make is like pure gold and silver. Yeah. Hallelujah. But also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But God creates all of his children for honor, just like silver and gold. And it all has to be refined in order to be pure. So why not we need to be refined by the Lord himself? And that's why the necessity of the potter's wheel. Yeah. None of us are perfect. No. We're all marred in some way or another. Yeah. But the Lord just takes it and smooths it out yes. and makes us a vessel of honor of silver and gold. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful to understand the way the, wor the, way the Lord works. Yes, now let's go to verse 7 of Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7. At what instant... I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy. Do you know he called the prophet Jeremiah and spoke to him this same thing in Jeremiah 1 and verse 10? But I want you to notice, sometimes you have to tear down and pluck up in order to make a new. You ever see a building that they tore down, destroyed it, and raised up a new one. That's exactly what the Lord does. But he builds it up in our lives through the word that he speaks to us. Amen. He uses his word for everything. Yes. And he gives you understanding. Yes. But what he's using to build is the word yes. and to plant. Yes. The word is planted in your heart. Yes. Remember this, the parable of the sower? He went forth to sow the seed or to plant the seed in our hearts. Hallelujah. And some came forth a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. 
But he always uses his word. In the beginning with Israel, what did he bring to him? His word, the Ten Commandments. What does he bring to us? The word of the gospel. He always speaks through his word to us. Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. He says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down. But now he says, to build and to plant. Sometimes he has to tear everything down. Yeah. You see a place as re, re, uh, what was one of the word I'm thinking of? Well, you make it new. I'm trying to think of the word. Hallelujah. When you revamp or make it new, they go in, they basically tear everything down, destroy it, and make everything new. And that's what the Lord does in our lives. He takes out the old and brings in the new. He makes you a new, new creature. Now let's go to verse 8 of Jeremiah 18. If that nation against whom I have pronounced Pronounce, turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I had thought to do unto them. Hallelujah. Does God repent? The word really means he changes his mind. He said, I want to bring evil upon you, but if you repent, I will change my mind. I will not bring it upon you. And this is what the prophet Jeremiah went to Israel to tell him. The Lord knows your condition, but if you turn back to him, he will not destroy you. Amen. He will plant yes, yes. and build you up. Amen. Yes. He's because God is in the building. Amen. Even in the New Testament, who is the master builder? Amen. But our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What are we considered, a house or a temple? So God is building our house yes. or our temple. Amen. The Bible says, do you not know that your body is the temple uh -huh. of the living God? Amen. Whose temple you are? So God is doing a work in our lives because we are the temple. Yes. We are what he is working in. Amen. We're called the house that he promised to build for yes. David. Thank you, Lord. But he's talking about you and I, the church mm -hmm. of the living God. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to teach about the church because many people are opposed yeah. to the church. Yeah. Tell you the truth. But God is here to build up your life in the church. And he has brought us together, even this evening, that he may build in your life and he may plant his word in you that you may flourish. How does a plant grow? You put the seed in. Amen. You water it. Yep. You take care of it. Yep. And what does it do? It grows and flourishes. That's why the Bible says we are to flourish in the house of the Lord. Amen. You receive instruction. You receive the word. You Amen. give the Lord gives you understanding. Amen. And I can feel the Spirit of the Lord giving you understanding tonight Amen. of what He desires to do in your life. Amen. But you must allow Him. Yes. Let's go to Ezekiel 18, verse 21. It says, But if the wicked would turn from his all of his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. You know, the Lord does not want the death of anyone. Amen. He wants everyone to turn to him and live. Yes. And to live. Amen. You don't wonder why they call Jesus the quickening spirit? Quickening spirit brings life. Yes. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 10, I have come that you may have life. I'm going to quicken your spirit that you may come alive, but in God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of this world. Everything is different in God's kingdom. But he awakens you to things you never knew before. There was a time in my life that a man came to me and told me the Lord would reveal things to me that I did not know before. And exactly is what has happened. And that's what God wants to do in your life. You will learn things that you never knew before. Amen. If you allow the Lord to teach you and quicken your spirit. Do a work in your heart and your life. And then God is able to teach you. But that's the work he wants to do with all of us. He wants you to know things you never knew before. Hallelujah. 
Let's go to Jeremiah 26 and verse 3. If so be that they will hearken and turn every man from his evil, that I may repent me or change my mind of the evil which I propose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. Hallelujah. God said, I want men everywhere Amen. to repent. I don't want anybody to be lost. Yes. The Lord wants nobody to be lost. Amen. He said, what pleasure do I have in the death of the wicked? None. Amen. And there's no pleasure in that. Yeah. But he has pleasure when you turn to the Lord yeah. and accept him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go to verse 9 of uh, Jeremiah 18. And at what instant shall I speak concerning a nation and concerning a, killed, a kingdom to build and to plant it? That's exactly what the Lord is doing in his church and in his people. He's building. You know why he gave prophets and evangelists and apostles, teachers and pastors to edify or to build up the church, the believers. That's the whole purpose of the ministry, yeah, yeah. is to edify, to build you up in knowledge of serving yeah. the Lord. And what he wants you to know tonight, yes. that he is the potter and we are the clay. Yeah. And he's working on our hearts and our lives yeah. and perfecting our spirit yeah. before yeah. him. Because yeah. our spirit is very important yeah. before the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse... Verse 10, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Hallelujah. God has promised us good, but if we do evil in his sight, he will change his mind. Amen. Yeah. So we're always to do good. Yeah. Our Lord went about doing good, did he not? Healing all manners of diseases. Yes. Hallelujah. So we must do what is good. Yeah. What is right before the Lord. Yeah. And that's why we study. Yeah. To show what Lord likes, what he want, likes, and what he dislikes. Amen. Whatever the Lord dislikes, you know what? We must dislike it too. Amen. Whatever he likes, we must like also. And in the word, he tells us what he likes and what he dislikes. Let's go to verse 11. It says, Now therefore go to speak to the man of Judah and to the, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, behold I frame evil against you and devise a vice, device against you. Return you now every one from his evil way and make your ways and doing good. Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to turn to him. You want to know where repentance truly is? You turn to God. Amen. Say, Lord, forgive me. I did not make you the Lord of my life. But now I want to make you the Lord of my life. That's all repentance is, is turning to God. Saying, basically, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Now let's go to 2 Kings 17 and verse 13. It says, Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets. He sent all the prophets to Judah yeah. and to Jerusalem to tell them, Turn Amen. to God. Yeah. Turn to God. Yes. By all the prophets and by all the seers. Hallelujah. The difference between a prophet and a seer, a prophet God speaks to, but a seer they see. Yeah. They see things that you and I don't see as yeah. here. Yeah. God shows them yeah. and they see it like a vision yeah. before God yeah. and God shows them. Yeah. But even the seers went to him and they said, we, I've seen this vision. I've yeah. seen this yeah. about you, Israel. Turn to God. Yeah. And he would send the prophets with the word and say, turn to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yet they would not hear. Hallelujah. Verse 17, verse 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers. 
and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. God sent them prophet after prophet, sent them a seer after a seer to them just to basically tell them, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Serve him. Love him. Hallelujah. Now let's go to verse 12. And they said, there is no hope. This is Israel speaking. But we will walk after our own devices and we will, every one, do the imagination of his evil heart according to our own plans. That's basically stubbornness. They would not submit to the word of God. They said, we'll make our own devices. Our own imagination. Whatever we imagine, that's fine with the Lord. Guess what? It isn't. If it comes from ourself, our imagination, our own devices that we come and make up before the Lord, the Lord will not accept them. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Jeremiah 2 and verse 25. I'm just about through. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidest, There is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. Hallelujah. Which strangers means they went and served other gods. Do you know they made gods supposedly of a stone and wood? Does that make any sense? To bow down before a stone or a wood? And they would have car they have people that knew how to do all these engravings and stuff like that. They would have them make these stones, especially for their gods. And their gods could not hear. Why would you bow down to a to wood or to a stubble or to a to a stone? Because you know who the only stone is. Your, Jesus Christ. Yeah. In prophecy, the stone always refers to Jesus Christ. He's the only stone you bow down to. He's not really a stone, but they call him a stone. But he's the only one that you bow down to, is the Lord himself. Hallelujah. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians in closing, chapter 4, verse 3 through 5. Do you know what the will of God is? Our sanctification, yep. Setting our lives aside unto the Lord and allow him to work with us. That's why I said he is the potter and we are the clay. We set our, sides, our lives aside so he can sanctify us. Literally set, him, set us aside for his, his purpose and his work, his will. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. Amen. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel or his body Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. in sanctification and honor. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Not in the lust of con conspicuous. I can't even pronounce the word. How do you say it? Yeah. Okay. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. Hallelujah. What the Lord is trying to tell us, let me work in your life. Yes. Let me form you and shape you Amen. in the matter I desire to. Yes, Do not resist the work of the Lord. Amen. We have to learn to surrender to him in every situation of our life. we got to remember he has placed us on the potter's wheel. Yes. And he will do with our life as he sees good. That's why I spoke about the need of the potter's wheel. Hallelujah. The Lord is the potter. Yes. And we are the clay. And he shapes and forms our life. But we have to allow him to do it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Don't ever take yourself out of the hands of the master. Mm -hmm. Of the Lord himself. Because that's what he's doing in your life. And he wants to give every one of you an expected end. What do you think your expected is? end is? Being with the Lord in heaven. Amen. He wants to give you a, your expected end. Mm -hmm. And that's to be with him eternally. Because he has placed eternity in your life Amen. and in mine. Amen. And we have the insurance that we will see him one day. Amen. Face to face. Amen. If we allow him to shape Amen. and mold us. Hallelujah. 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 And that's why I say. 
the importance of allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to form us. He will not do anything that will harm us. That's our trust we have in the Lord. Hallelujah. I credit everything to the Lord himself. Whether you may, whether I may think it's good or bad, I know the Lord is shaping my life. Yes. He has placed me on the potter's wheel. Yes. He takes away a mar here, cut here, whatever needs to be fixed, Amen. he fixes it for yes. you. Amen. Just give your life to him. Yes. Can we stand tonight yes. and thank the Lord yes. that he's doing a work in our lives? Yes and in our hearts. I want to thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in my life and in my heart, O Lord Jesus. Shape me and mold me after your own way, that I may be submissive to you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are the potter that takes care of my life. Hallelujah, you change what you desired in my life. You continue to speak to me, Lord, and remove all the ruins that came into my life and make everything new. Because you have said we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. And you are creating us, Lord. Hallelujah. Into your image. And I want to thank you, Lord, tonight. You are the potter. And we are the clay. Make me and show for me after your way. Hallelujah. And let that be your prayer tonight, Lord. Shape me and mold me after your way. Because we are nothing but clay in the hands of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And that's what I felt the Lord has for us tonight. Allow Him, the Master, to shape and fold our lives. Because everything is beautiful when the Lord shapes and molds our life. But sometimes we have to wait yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. We don't always rush into everything. Amen. We wait. We pray. We say, Lord, your yes. will be done. Because he is shaping our lives. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you shine his countenance upon you. Amen. And give you peace and rest. Amen. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. Yes.